Good afternoon. Uh, I want to take a few minutes today to talk about what we're doing down here in uh, Texas on the border. We have a director of DPS that's going to be speaking here in a minute. Uh, General Compton from Missouri will be here speaking. Uh, several months ago, we made a commitment to Governor Abbott that we were going to be sending troops down here. And today you're seeing some of Missouri's troops that are down here. You're also seeing members of the DPS, also of the Texas National Guard. And the idea is to make sure everybody knows what these men and women are doing every day down here. I think the important takeaway for folks back home in Missouri is to realize the battle that we're fighting down here at the border is keeping it from happening in our own borders, in our own state, in Missouri. I can't thank the partnership of what we're receiving from Governor Abbott, all the agencies here in Texas that has made our troops feel so much at home, and to be part of a military operation and a security operation to try to secure the borders down here in Texas. The other thing, just a few things, we're going to mention a lot of statistics today. Some will, we're up here today. But again, I think I want to thank the legislative body for a unanimous decision and both a nonpartisan position to support the people of Texas, to support Governor Abbott, and to do what we can to help the people not only of Missouri and not only of Texas, but of the United States of America. The reason we're down here, the reason we are down here, is a total failure of the Biden administration for what they've done and why we're here today trying to protect everyday citizens back home. Again, I'm thankful for the troops that are down here. I'm thankful for their families back home, that they support them at a time like this. And I want the people also back home to know this is not an eight-hour shift. These gentlemen and ladies are working. These troops are working 24 hours a day down here assisting Texas and making sure we're doing our part to secure the borders of the United States. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to General Compton. General? Thank you, Governor. And uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am so honored to be here uh, on this team, to be standing in Texas with our governor, Governor Parson, and these soldiers doing great work on behalf of our states, the great state of Missouri, Texas, and in fact, on behalf of our nation. The mission of the Missouri National Guard here in Texas is to integrate with the Texas National Guard and the Department of Public Safety to prevent illegal immigration and to prevent illegal trafficking. And to date, our soldiers have assisted Task Force Lone Star with over hundreds of detections and deterrence that is making a difference. Our mission here is important, and we are proud of our soldiers for what they do. And as Governor Parson mentioned, the support that our citizens of Missouri and our partners here in Texas provide our troops uh, can't be overshadowed. We are so grateful, Director Escalon, for how you help integrate our troops and care for them, but then also how you help care for our families and employers back home. It's truly a team of teams and a team sport. Uh, I'm honored again to be here. Thanks for all that you're doing. A big thanks for the troops and the interagency coming together to protect our states and our nation. Thank you very much. General, thank you for those words, and and uh, means a lot to us, and means a lot to the team, the state of Texas, and, and Governor. Thank you for what you do every day to support us in in our in our our challenges, our concerns here along the border. We're covering over 1,250 miles of river from El Paso down to Brownsville, and we cannot do it by ourselves. So. The, the Texas Military Department, the Missouri, several other states have come down to assist us on border security operations, and it is so appreciative, so we're so grateful of that support. So thank you for the troopers you send down here to assist us. Thank you for the soldiers that come down here to assist us. Right now, we're trying to cover 1,250 miles, like I mentioned, but we've got to be very strategic where we deploy our personnel. 
a lot of area. And during these last three years, we have made over 47,000 criminal arrests, 10,000 criminal trespass arrests, and over 17,000 human smuggling arrests. We can't do it alone. It's all about partnerships. Partnerships is what makes this operation a success and will continue uh, until the numbers go down considerably, and they're trending that way. So again, we're very thankful. We're thankful for the troopers that are here, the guardsmen that are here supporting us in what we do every day. We're about 50, 50 yards away from the river. As you can see behind me, right across is Piedras Negras, Coahuila, Mexico. You have barrier. So again, thank you for the support. And we're always, always going to be grateful for that. So. Thanks. Thank you, Director. Let me finish up by saying earlier I had a briefing uh, before we come out here today with uh, DPS and Texas National Guard. The one thing I want to assure all Missourians, we are making a difference, uh, without a doubt. When I come down here several months ago with Governor Abbott and to see what's happened in that short period of time, because we have troops on the ground, is remarkable. The Highway Patrol and the Missouri National Guard has had over 4,000 encounters since they've been here on the ground for less than two months. 4,000, so you can imagine what else is going on along this border. And one of the things that struck me that was so important, they've deterred five national terrorists coming across this border and interdictions that we've stopped. That means people's safety at home, and that's why this mission is so important, why we're doing what we are to send and support financially but more importantly, to show our support for the love of this country and the love of our state. So with that, it's time to sign the bill. So we're going to move over here and sign the bill. Again, it's the appropriations amount the bill is of the people in Missouri supporting this operation down here in Texas and supporting securing the border. Thank you all very much. That's yours. Colonel, if you don't mind, do you care to pass them out if somebody wants one? We'll just pass them out. In case anybody back home is wondering what the temperature is out here, I think it's around 106. Uh, but it's not deterring these troops or Department of Public Safety from out here doing their job. But uh, let me assure you, it's, it's plenty hot down here. But uh, again, I appreciate these soldiers and highway patrolmen that's been down here working. Director, I think on the way down here, did I hear that you guys uh, had an entry here yesterday? Was, was that correct here yesterday? So it was about three days ago. We had somebody from Lebanon that, that uh, came through here a little further upriver, and we turned him over to uh, the federal agencies for further processing. He was a subject of interest from a, well, he was a, it was coming from a, a place of interest in the okay. East, right, Lebanon. That's from and, Lebanon. Uh, our troopers and, and the soldiers uh, interdicted him. And we turn them over to 
FBI. Yeah. U.S. Border Patrol for further processing. We're, we're, how do, from Lebanon, for the people back home, I guess, listen, how do they, what is their route to get here? So they'll go in through Latin America, they leave the Middle East, they go into Venezuela, uh, those, those parts of the country end up going through Honduras. And from Honduras, they'll either trek it by bus, vehicle, all the way up here. But uh, they'll use airlines all the way up to around the Central, Central America. And, and in during that process, the immigration or one of the authorities will flag it. Hey, this individual is coming from a location of interest. Okay. And that's how that comes together. And for everybody back home in Missouri, too, what, what is the going rate now, the cartel, when they get involved, are charging to get people across the border? So if you're looking for you know, 1,000 to 8,000 per, bot, per body, per individual, it all depends on the, on the, the involvement. What, what type of uh, usage of, of how, do, how do you want us to get you there? How far? So I've been seeing from 1,000 to 8,000 across the river into, into Texas. That's just for one person. Yeah. You could make, a, that's a lot of money. And do most people have to go through the cartel to get through? There's, that's, that's probably the most car, common way to go through the criminal organizations is, is, is the most common way, but it's other ways, right? Legal ways and so on and so forth. Right. Go through the port of entry, take buses and aircraft, uh, but that is the most common. Has the port of entry changed, the numbers changed in there? Is everybody starting to just try to go across what I would call illegally? versus a port of entry, do you know? So you see a lot of people cross between the ports of entry. Okay. They avoid, they avoid the, um, the port of entry and, you know, the information we are receiving from individuals we come across is, why go through the port of entry if I can just cross between the river and then more than likely I'll be released. So mm -hmm. that's the incentive, right? Yeah. Uh, and maybe, again, for the people back home, I guess, because this one's going basically to their citizens back home. So if somebody comes across the border and they are encountered, what happens to that person? Let's say the judge gives them a, a court date of three or four years out. What happens to that person once they receive that citation? Or, or maybe I should say that court date. What happens to them then? So there, there's two things that can happen, especially in this part of Texas, is if they come across us, they could go to jail for criminal trespass, a criminal mischief, if they damage barrier. So they could be facing state charges first. But again, there's over 700 miles of river in our area, so there's some areas we can't cover. Right. But say U.S. Border Patrol comes across, they grab them, they vet them, they process them, they give them a, they give them a court date, which could be three to four years, and they're released pending that date. Um, that's more of a U.S. federal authority or question they can answer more details but from working with them that's what we're seeing is what that yes sir so basically once they go through that court or they get that citation they're kicked back out on the streets that's correct and can go about anywhere in the country they want to go yes sir so. I would say kind of finishing this up today on the official side, just to echo back home to my fellow citizens back home in Missouri. I just hope all of you will keep all the people down here in mind, especially our National Guard, our highway patrolmen, but also all the people down here at the border. There's many other states that has delegations down there. I want to thank them all for being down here, but I want you to keep them in their prayers. Uh, this is not an easy job to come down here with everything that's going on right now. So I just ask that you take the time to remember these soldiers that are down here, these law enforcement officers are down here day in and day out, because what they're doing today is going to make a difference for all of us tomorrow. So thank you all for joining us today. I appreciate it.